Who doesn't love a good Easter egg? Diabetics. But everyone enjoys a good cinematic Easter egg. Tiny little coded messages, references and in-jokes designed to reward the uber faithful, the production crew and sometimes just the director themselves. Well, everyone at What Culture loves Easter eggs, so much so that we snuck our very own hidden message into this introduction. Can you spot it? I'm Adam from WhatCulture.com and here are 8 hidden messages you never noticed in famous movies. Number 8. They what in my food? Anchorman is one of the most quotable films of all time, has more jokes per square inch than most comedies can even dream of, and they're just the ones you've noticed. Some of his jokes aren't even in English, for example, including this establishing shot outside a Mexican restaurant. The name of the eatery is Escupimos, Escupimos en su alimento. I've butchered that, which translates in English as we spit in your food. Ah, oh, a charming little gag that flew by the vast majority of the audience. They've done studies, you know. Number seven, Tyler's Warning. Fight Club is a dense movie crammed with bizarre little secrets like lice in an old wig. Coffee cups are hidden in every scene. Tyler Durden will appear in certain shots a frame at a time. Odd little moments of CGI. The Easter eggs aren't even confined to the film itself. Now, anyone who's bought a DVD will be familiar with the copyright warnings you get when you pop in the disc. Oh, yeah, there's one before the start of Fight Club. And wait, hang on. Tyler? On the Fight Club DVDs, the FBI warning was replaced by the filmmakers with their own version, a long aspirational screed telling the audience to quit their job and seize their humanity. I mean, can't I just watch the DVD instead? I'm tired. Number six, charming footwear. Quentin Tarantino's films are full of goodies, from red apple cigarettes to kaboom cereal boxes concealing guns. Some of his hidden messages are subtle and genre savvy. This little Easter egg, however, is not. As the bride, full of great vengeance and furious anger, walks across the floor in the house of blue leaves, the camera is positioned beneath the glass floor to reveal, printed onto the bottom of the bride's shoes. <clears throat> yeah, well. Thank you, Quentin. You can see this one of two ways. One, an indication of the bride's fury at the time, or two, a sly pop of the Easter egg hunting crowd from QT. Number five, Morse code monkey. King Kong wasn't a comedy, a king comedy. <laughs> Mm. This is not to say that the movie in which a giant ape fought three T-Rexes took itself too seriously, but we thought it took itself a little more seriously than this. As a ship nears Skull Island, a Morse code message comes through calling for Jack Black's arrest. That's what we're told it means. In actual fact, the Morse code translates as, show me the monkey. Mm -hmm. The legacy of Jerry Maguire, ladies and gentlemen. Also, King Kong's an ape, but there isn't any point in correcting a message that once again reads, show me the monkey. Number four, still alive. This one has just become extremely relevant with the recent appearance of a trailer for a movie called 10 Cloverfield Lane, which has been described as a blood relative of the movie Cloverfield, which was Blair Witch meets Godzilla. Whether it's an official sequel or not is hard to say at this point, but if this hidden message from Cloverfield is anything to go by, then it might just be. At the end of the original film, once the credits rolled, a sound could be heard. It sounded a little like help us, but distorted. However, when reversed, it becomes clear. It says, it's still alive. It's still alive. Sequel bait, if ever there was one. Number three, Biblical Smith. To say that the Matrix had veiled religious overtones would be to do a disservice to people who make veils. With godlike powers, saviors, architects, and a promised land called Zion, it's steeped in obvious religious theming, including this sly biblical reference. In The Matrix Reloaded, Agent Smith's car has a license plate IS5416, which is a reference to biblical verse Isaiah, Isaiah? Isaiah 54 16 which reads behold I have created the smith that bloweth the coals in the fire and that bringeth forth an instrument for his work the smith very clever later on in the trilogy of films Neo sees smith in his blind matrix vision and he sees him as a creature of fire Number two, John Landis and his obsession with Wednesday. For some reason, John Landis, director of seminal 80s movies like Animal House, The Blues Brothers and American Werewolf in London, has an obsession with the phrase, see you next Wednesday. He really does. The phrase was taken from the film 2001, A Space Odyssey. They're Frank's last words to his parents in their video phone chat. See you next Wednesday. And for reasons known only to Landis, he's decided to put it in all of his movies. Most of the time, it takes the form of a movie glimpsed in the background. It's a monster movie poster in the Blues Brothers, a non-stop orgy porno in American Werewolf in London, and a vintage Hollywood classic in Trading Places. And that's just one of like 12 or 13 references. Now, is this because the line is close to see you next Tuesday? The famous schoolyard way of getting around saying the word 
well, I probably shouldn't say it. Number one, I Am Legend predicts Batman v Superman. Hey, did you know they're making a film about Batman fighting Superman? You'd never know it from the endless river of marketing. And one of the big tent poles of that marketing is this, the Batman Superman logo. But this isn't the first time it's been seen on the big screen. Now, it turns out that during underwhelming apocalypse man dog erotic thriller, I Am Legend, the huge logo can be spotted in Times Square. I Am Legend was distributed by Warner Brothers, the same people who were bringing us Dawn of Justice, and was a reference to the fact that the film's producer, Akiva Goldsman, was once attached to a Batman Superman world's finest film ages ago before it fell through. Also, with the Batman Superman logo being all over Times Square this summer, does that mean that this summer the world will be ending? Because that would be intense commitment to branding from Warner Brothers. I don't put it past them. And that's our list. Did we miss any out? Tell us about it in the comments. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And you can follow me on Twitter here. I'm Adam from whatculture.com, and I'll see you soon.